Hello and welcome to today's episode of Fly to Freedom. I am Julia, your host, and I'm an eating disorder recovery coach who has lived in and recovered from 40 years of anorexia, orthorexia and exercise addiction and turned my pain into my passion and I help other people find their own power and recover from their eating disorders. So thank you so much for listening and joining me today. Uh, You're going to have to excuse me because I have a cold. So if I sound all snotty and croaky, I apologize. I still wanted to get this episode out. So I'm just going to go for it and sound however I sound. I wanted to talk today about developing consciousness, which is so important in life as well as in eating disorder recovery because 95% of our lives are lived in our subconscious not our conscious and we are living in our stories and our conditioning most of the time and the goal of our subconscious is to keep us safe and free from harm and that often has nothing to do with the actual situation now. It is just from our old stories, our old conditioning. It's from literally narratives from years ago, mostly from our childhood that we live our lives by and has absolutely nothing to do with events and situations that are currently happening. So when we expand our consciousness and really work at becoming conscious and developing our consciousness. We are developing our awareness. We're coming back to now and bringing ourselves back to the moment where we can look around and we're not living in our old stories. We're not living in our thoughts. And by grounding ourselves and becoming aware, we can then start to open our minds to asking questions. Is this thought actually for my current situation? Do I need to be living my life by this thought? So what is consciousness? Realistically, mm, excuse me, this drink is really good for helping keep my nose clear. So that's why I'm going for it all through. Um, But consciousness is literally awareness. And when we become aware, we can remove the focus of our attention from our thoughts to now. And when we bring our attention to now, then those thoughts, those stories, those narratives from our past don't have the control over us anymore. So take in eating disorder recovery when you've got all the thoughts and the narrative that you shouldn't have eaten that, um, you're bad for eating that, and all these thoughts going around in your head. If you can step out of your thoughts, because as humans, we have this unique ability to not be part of our thoughts, to be the observer of our thoughts. We are, in actual fact, not our thoughts. You're the witness of your thoughts, the thinker of your thoughts. You're not the actual thoughts themselves. But becoming conscious is is not something that just happens. It's not something that you can do today and you're conscious tomorrow. It's a practice and it develops over time. And it's not, it's not easy, to be honest. It's not easy to say, I am not these thoughts. And it's not easy to be in the now all the time because our subconscious is habitual. We often don't even realize that it's happening and we're running along on autopilot. And the subconscious is incredibly helpful in lots of ways, particularly with things like digesting our food and breathing and all that sort of thing. We don't have to think about doing those. It just happens for us, which is what keeps us alive But our thoughts, we do have control over where we put our attention. So we don't really have control over our thoughts. 
And becoming conscious is not about stopping the thoughts because the thoughts are going to come in. It's about where we put our attention. So when you become conscious, when you step out of the autopilot, the never ending thoughts that are coming in and out and in and out, you're just coming back into your body and reconnecting with yourself and just being okay, what can I hear? At the moment, I can hear a clock ticking. I can smell the ginger drink that I've got here. I can feel the chair under my bottom, the desk under my arm. I can feel my hand on my leg and the warmth of my skin. And it's just about being right now in the moment and when I'm connecting to now and I'm aware of where I am and what I'm doing what I can hear what I can see what I can feel what I can smell when you're aware of all that when you're using your senses then you're conscious then you're in the now and you're giving the focus to now and right now Nothing bad is happening. Right now, I am completely safe. So by just stepping back and practicing my consciousness, I've stepped out of the thoughts that can run away with me, the thoughts that can make you feel anxious or just follow the old pathways. And the more you practice this, and I would suggest having at least a daily practice, just set an alarm on your phone to just be conscious, check in with yourself. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you feel? And come to your breath. Bring your breath to the forefront of your mind and breathe deeply in through your nose, right into your belly. And feel your body moving as you do this. Feel the air coming in through your nose, right in, into your body, into your stomach, and how your body moves when this happens. And then feel it going out again, still engaging all your senses. And this is coming back to the now. So all the worries, all the thoughts racing around your head, in that moment... None of them have your focus because you're focusing on now. And that has the beautiful effect of bringing anxiety right down, bringing the worries right down. Because when you've connected to yourself and your consciousness and your awareness, you can be looking around and realizing that actually in this moment, I'm safe. Nothing bad is happening. And then because you've brought your anxiety down, because you've come back to the now, you can start to question, what did my mind want to tell me? What did my mind tell me that those thoughts meant? What did my mind tell me that eating the dessert meant? My mind told me that I shouldn't have eaten the dessert. Well, why? Why shouldn't I have had it? And you can start to become more aware and rather than just going along saying, this is what my mind told me, so that must be true. Because our minds don't tell us what is true. They tell us what they know. And that isn't necessarily what is true for us now. The old stories that we may have lived in our childhood to protect us, that we may have learned through conditioning of other people telling us these things, schools telling you that you have to have five a day, the eat well plate, all these sorts of things that our child brains take in and process the best ways they know how, which doesn't necessarily mean they're the best ways for us now. So when you bring back yourself to your consciousness, then you can start asking questions and you will often find that what your mind is telling you this means is re related to an old narrative 
and not what's actually happening now. And that old narrative will normally relate back to some form of wound or unmet need. And you can start getting really curious about these things. And another thing that's really, really important is that you celebrate yourself for spending this time coming back to now, for just bringing yourself back to your awareness and taking yourself out of that subconscious autopilot where the thoughts are just coming in and you're blindly following them. So to recap on consciousness is awareness of using your senses, of using your breath and of using your grounding. And the goal is not to stop the thoughts, but to change the focus of your attention. And this is a practice that builds over time. It's, it's not going to happen straight away. You are not your thoughts. And this practice of not being your thoughts is called metacognition, and it is unique to humans. We are the watcher, the observer of our thoughts, and we can step back from our thoughts and our feelings. We can be the feeler of our feelings and the observer of our thoughts. And the more you practice being conscious, the more you can bring yourself back to your awareness when triggers come in. So the daily practice I'd like you to try or to do to expand your consciousness is set an alarm on your phone. And when the alarm goes off, say, okay, you take some deep breaths and this only needs to take a couple of minutes. It doesn't need to be an eyes closed private affair. It can be at work. It can be in your lunch break. It can be at any time. It can be when you're cooking dinner. So just take some deep breaths and feel the air going in and out of your body. And just think to yourself, what are three things I can touch right now? Can I touch my hair? Can I touch my skin? Can I touch some wood of a table or something? What are three things I can touch? What are three things I can see? I can see my computer and um, a beautiful crystal actually, I'll show you, it's lovely really big one, very heavy. And I can also see my drink. What are three things you can hear? Um, I don't know if my computer's frozen now. Is it still going? I think so, right, sorry. Uh, three things I can hear right now are the clock ticking, I can just hear a vague kind of like electrical buzz. And I can hear my breath, my own breath. Uh, what are three things I can smell? Or due to having a cold, I can smell very little. Um, the ginger drink and that's about it. But normally I'd be able to smell other things. Can you feel like the wind on your skin, can you feel a temperature? Do you feel warm? Do you feel cold? And just by following these and then coming back to your breath again, you have literally changed the focus of your thoughts and just become aware. And the more you can do this and the more you can expand this, then the easier it is to deal with the triggers and to come back when your anxiety is spinning out and you're starting to feel like, you don't know how to handle things. You'll be able to just step back and become conscious again. And the more you practice, the more you can start asking questions of why you do things. I, mean, I had a really weird one last week. I'm going to stay with the lovely Victoria next month. And she talked about going for a meal, uh, one of these tasting menus, which I've never actually been for. And my immediate response was, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, I, 
that's not for people like me. I don't like those foods. And those, those foods, I don't even know what they're going to be because the tasting menu is kind of a surprise. And I realized, I started questioning why, why was that my automatic reaction when I've never been for one of these meals? I don't know what the food is going to be. Why do I think that I don't like it? So instead of just saying, no, I can't do it, I start to ask questions and become more aware because I've been practicing being aware, practicing being conscious. And it turns out when I dig deep and start asking questions saying, why am I thinking that? Why do I say I don't like these foods? Have I had these foods before? And it got to the point where I realized that I thought I didn't like the foods because my mum didn't like the foods. And she told me when I was growing up, oh, we don't like that sort of thing. We don't like, we don't like meat that's pink in the middle. Uh, we don't like cream and dairy products and all this sort of thing. And so I had never tried them. I've never tried like steak that's pink or anything like that so it's not there's a narrative from my childhood that's that's not even true and so now I'm looking forward to going for this meal to try these new things and a new experience when my immediate reaction was no I can't do that that's not for me and it's only by becoming curious becoming aware becoming conscious that I could see the old narratives, the old stories that I was immediately answering a question for now with an old story. And that's, that's not how to grow. That's not how to have experiences. And because of being aware, I was then able to ask the questions and come up with an answer that's appropriate for now rather than answering with a story from my past. So I'd love to know how you get on with practicing becoming conscious, setting your alarm, bringing yourself back to now, becoming more aware. And when the narrative is telling you these things, ask, what is my mind trying to tell me? Rather than just going along with it and doing the old thoughts, living your life on autopilot, that's running along to an old story that's out of date and doesn't serve you anymore. Thank you so, so much for listening. It's been absolutely great to have you. And I didn't sneeze and I didn't cough. So that's an absolute result. I would love it if you could rate my podcast five stars so that I can reach some more people. And I will see you again next week. Thank you so much for being here.